Do you know that asthma is now on the rise and even our dogs, they're getting it? Asthma in our dogs, how to naturally prevent and treat it. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell that's on it for notifications. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Asthma, it's on the rise in people, it's on the rise in our animals. We're taught in vet school, like, yep, dogs, they don't get asthma. They just get chronic bronchitis. Apparently what I was taught in vet school wasn't true. Probably around the same lines that feeding good quality dry science diet is good for your dog. For those of you who have horses, like that's now a big concern, rising asthma rates in the horse population. What is it? Think of asthma as allergic airway disease. You're getting inflammatory cells within the small airways. These airways are constricting and then you're seeing the breathing difficulties. Might just be a dog that has an occasional cough, like Tula. <laughs> maybe your dog has a wheeze, you hear it on when they're breathing in, inspiration or maybe on expiration. I myself actually have a little bit of an inspiratory wheeze. And sometimes it's like unconscious, I'll hear this little wheeze and I'm kind of wondering like, do I have like early signs of asthma? A dog with asthma, they can have much the exact same thing. The difference between asthma and something like bronchitis is that asthma was seen as being episodic. It can flare up, it can go down. Whereas something like chronic bronchitis, it's ongoing. Like there's always this chronic airway inflammation. Some of the causes of asthma in our dogs, cat dander. Cats are often implicated in a cause of asthma in people, also in our dogs. Causing asthma, bad cat. It's spring and things are pollinating. Pollens, it can trigger allergic reactions in the lungs during the asthma. Smoke, such as smoke from the fireplace, that can be a trigger. Dust, especially the house dust mites. Even household cleaners like this, they can be a trigger for asthma. A dog having an asthma attack, this is a dog in severe breathing distress. You know, their mouth is gonna be wide. They're just having such big difficulty gaining air into their lungs because the airways are all constricted down, right? They're gonna be seriously distressed. Like their legs are spread. They're like, they just can't get enough air. Their gums may no longer be this nice, healthy pink color. They could be blue cyanotic. Conventional veterinary treatment for a dog with asthma centers around three main things. Number one, some type of bronchodilator, something is gonna open up the airway. Aminophilin, that's one option. Secondarily, some type of steroid to suppress all that airway inflammation. Maybe prednisone orally, maybe an injectable steroid, a nebulizer. Third, something to help deal with the underlying allergy. Typically, once again, they might be looking at prednisone, a steroid, and or some type of antihistamine. There are an array of different holistic options, and this is what you should start with. One of the first big principles, get yourself an air purifier. You know, just try to make the air as clean as possible. Your dog is gonna have less potential allergens to ingest, trigger the asthma in the first place. A good quality antioxidant filled supplement that's gonna decrease free radical damage, at least preserve the remaining lung cells. Ultimate Canine Health Formula, it's a great option, filled with antioxidants. Next, natural anti-inflammatories that can decrease the amount of inflammation going on in the lungs, such as adequate doses of the omega-3 fatty acids, 95% curcumin. Cannabidiol or CBD, it's helped more than a few dogs with asthma. Then these are three alternatives to the three conventional veterinary treatments for asthma. First, a natural airway dilator, a natural bronchodilator. We're using green tea. Green tea, it contains a moderate amount of caffeine and caffeine is a proven airway dilator. In moderate amounts, it's still considered safe for our dogs. We're using half a cup of green tea. We're adding in one half a teaspoon of a local unpasteurized honey. The honey is gonna help with the cough that we'll see in asthma, as well as help deal with the underlying allergic reaction. Last but not least, we're adding in a quarter of a teaspoon, which is 800 milligrams of slippery elm. The slippery elm, it is great for any time we're dealing with dogs that have coughing. Secondarily, it has some antioxidant properties. So it can also help our dog that has this allergic airway disease. This is the amount you'd be giving to a 40 pound dog daily. Next, the herb, which is considered the natural corticosteroid. It can naturally decrease all those level of inflammatory cells. I've talked about it a lot. It's this guy here, licorice root extract. Licorice root is only meant for short term use. So that's a maximum of 14 days in a row. I would suggest would be this amount here. So right here, I'm at to the half a mil of a dropper. 
be a half a mil per 20 pounds of body weight twice a day for 14 days. Then number three, it's a natural antihistamine that's gonna help deal with the underlying allergy in the first place. Quercetin. A standard dog dose of the quercetin is 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. And I honestly feel that if you're gonna assess whether it's being beneficial or not, keep your dog on it for a full 90 days. So asthma, it happens in dogs. And if your dog has some of those signs we discussed, get him or her examined by a veterinarian, have them check for asthma. Then consider some of those holistic options. I know myself, I'm getting back on this guy. Quill, daily, because I've got that wheeze. Thanks you guys for watching. Mmm, Tula, here's your quill, you want this? Mmm. Mm. Tula loves the oils. She loves CB, she loves quill. There you're a little star dog. Good girl. Mmm. Thanks again, you guys. It's Dr. Jones.